Yeah, so we're going to be delving into the new Endura Brushless ESC. Uh, as soon as I saw that there was an announcement that they'd made the conversion plate, because this was originally for the TRX4M, um, I was like, let's get it. Let's see what this can do, because at the moment I'm running like quite a lot of these rigs on BM100s. One of them's got the R80 uh, version 2. Uh, the other ones are running version 1s. The R80 just means 80% reverse basically but the uh the version ones have a lot less uh, and actually i quite like it now i've kind of got used to it kind of built up that muscle memory not having such hefty fast reverse yeah not too bad at all the r80 definitely um got that little bit more snap so you know it does work really well but what we're going to do is we're going to find a rig which none of these are going to fit it uh I mean, you might even have to kind of build a parts rig to put this in. And we're going to run it uh, in comparison with its slow speed and its abilities with a version 1 MB100. I got an FTX, sorry, FCX 24M. Um, see how it compares with the slow crawling speed. And I've also got this one up here that is running the version 2 of the MB100. Um, and really kind of put them all up together and see, well, does this really make much of a difference and how good is this brushless system all right so this is the mbl32 uh not as catchy as the mb100 but we'll get used to it and there we go right so uh before powering on please set your transmitter throttle trim to zero percent okay well that might un kind of Make a little bit more sense later on, maybe. <laughs> um, yeah, this thing it looks nice, man. Look at that. That is so nice. Uh, the motor. Ooh, it's tight in that box. Can I get it out? Mm. Oh, I see why I can't pull it out. It's got cable. There we go. Man, I've, I've got a really big thumb. Well, this thing is tiny. Yeah, this is the purple Viper. And it is absolutely dinky. Loving this. Uh, what we got on the back? We have got brushless motor, 1621, and it's a 3,600 kV. So nice and small rotation. All right, let's uh, empty the box and see what else we've got. Well, that's the box gone. All right, so we've got a little programmer and some Velcro pads. We've got a carbon fiber conversion plate for the SCX24 and a steel or aluminium part as well to go on the back. And a whole heap of cables. Um, they normally provide quite a lot of uh, cables for these as well, which is cool. Uh, they are running. So these have the X30, or sorry, X13 adapters on. Um, probably going to have to make my own adapter <laughs> um, to try and get that to run some of the batteries I've got. And let's just pull this system out of Got a little bag of fixings and yeah, the module. Now, what's this? This is the on and off button they've got, and they've actually got a couple of little toggles as well. So I need to find out what they do, and then we can set those. As you can see there, you've got on and KE one and two. And yeah, you've got the ESC. Now let's grab an MB100 and do the size comparison. All right, so hemp begins, take up the focus. That is a, a version one MB100, and this is the MBL32. And uh, yeah, it's, it is definitely smaller than the MB100 by, you know, well, actually, yeah, it's a smidge smaller. Um, got a little bit of a, and it's definitely narrower than the kind of MB100. 
So yeah, we're looking at a smaller ESC to the MB100, which is pretty good. Uh, although we do have to kind of mount and module like that somewhere as well. But at least you've got kind of options. You could put that somewhere else compared to that. All right, I need to build a rig to put this in. I'm going to grab a load of parts and build up a basic SCX24 and get this thing in. And uh, yeah, see what it's all about. All right, so those uh, switches on the on and off switch, as you can see, they are for the BEC, the BEC output. So it says both off, you get six volts. You get an on on the on and off on the KE you get 7.4 volts. So there we go, that's what they are for. Uh, there is no other options, they are the two options that you can do. Yes, I do read manuals. All right, so just checking the parameters, everything is on full 100%, uh, but it clearly states if the parameters have been configured at the factory, if you wish to customize them, uh, then yeah, you just visit the website and download the relevant drivers and firmware tools to tune it up and i guess this is what this little puppy here is for so you can change all of that um which is pretty awesome um yeah that's a nice touch problems problem hmm hopefully not yep just a big pile of scx24 parts uh right so i've got a couple of uh Rock sliders, rails, front and rear axles. Um, I don't even know what this is. I've had it in my box for a little while. It says uh, aluminium shock mount towers. So, and receiver tray by the looks of it. Uh, I've got a bumper we can put on and I'll probably sit with the gunmetal gray links on it. I'll dig out my pressed steel wheels, I think, run them on it. Uh, put some axles, they've got no bearings, probably got no gearing in it either. Um, see what's going on there. Um, I've got an old gnarly servo, don't know if it works, but we'll give it a go. And probably gonna have to use standard servo arm on it because I haven't got any metal ones left because they're all on rigs. And that's about it, really. Right, Abracad. Uh, Debra. All right, so I've scrambled together some parts. Uh, I actually tell you what I did. I actually brought the uh, housings from Ramp Grab. These are like six ninety nine off Amazon, and uh, I just put the stock stuff into them. So got alley covers, and I tell you why, because I wanted to do this kind of weathered look. I kind of sanded all the corners down, just buffed everything off, just scuffed it all up. Uh, literally any part that's metal. I kind of just hit with a sanding sponge and just, yeah, just brought all the metal through. There was loads of scratches and stuff on them anyway. Well, not these, these were brand new, but, you know, they're going to get scuffed and scratched anyway. So I thought I'd just, uh, yeah, kind of give it that nice weathered effect. Um, right, I only have a stock gearbox. I do have a metal housing for whatever reason. <laughs> Uh, so I'll put that on because I've scuffed that up as well. I'm going to tear this down and see how this purple viper and everything goes together. All right, let's have a look. You'll have to excuse the background noise. The printer is busy. I'm busy working on a old school Ford crew cab. Big old beast. This thing is going to be awesome. I mean, look at that. It's almost a full length of an SCX24 there. Um, so big, long wheelbase. Going to be full custom ladder chassis in it. Yeah. If you want to know and follow this project, well, better hit the subscribe button, notification bell, because, yeah, I'm going to be showing this and all its progress. Anyway, that's not what we're doing. We're doing this. Right. Oh, yeah. I still haven't done nothing else. I got sidetracked. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just pull the housing and get the motor out as well. So I do apologize about the printer blaring away, but you know, we got things to do. Okay, so the MBL3 
2 SCX24 comes with this little pack just here and let's just open this up all right so we've got a new housing carbon fiber motor plate and obviously our old SCX24 so I'm going to go ahead and fit this up and get it all buttoned up and get the motor in and then we'll take a look at it so one of the things I've noticed before installing just kind of making sure everything works is that this kind of spins fine but every now and then it kind of gets there you go it just it just binds up you kind of see and again and again so I'm not too sure what that is or whether that's actually a fault or whether that's going to cause me problems or whether it clears itself once I get it fired up um, yeah see and then it's like just kind of like grips and you kind of have to back it off a little bit and then yeah I don't know hmm all right well let's fire it up and see if it causes me any issues all right so I've got it all wired up now the only thing I can print is shaking the camera then yeah the, uh... <laughs> let me move that okay so the one thing I have noticed is that if I apply trigger, it feels really gritty in my fingers. Like, I don't know if you can see that. Now you get it to there and it's like nothing at all. Get it low down and it just starts to get a little, uh, like yeah, not sure. It's hard to see, especially with the print, printer jiggling around. Stay focused. Now, there we go. You can see that shaking. It's actually shaking my hand. And it goes when you full power it, but down here, yeah, it's quite gritty. All right, well, let's put it in and see what it does. All right, this seems to be working. Can't really test it because it obviously moves around quite a bit, but it's definitely working fine. So that's fine. I'm actually going to be running all on the version SCX24 version ones. Um, I've got two SCX running this, and then obviously the FTX24. I use their one. So I'm going to get this in the rig, get some shocks on it, get the axles in it, and uh, see if we can't make this thing go forwards and backwards. We go and set it up. It's really easy. It's you know, half a dozen bolts, and they supply the cables you need to convert it from the uh, X130. Uh, the only thing they don't supply it with is maybe from an X130 to a balance plug. Um, I use these rather than the uh, little red ones, just because, I don't know, I prefer plugging these in to the little red ones. But, you know, that's personal preference. I can make my own. It's not the end of the world. But that would be kind of cool. But then I suppose if you're running a free cell, then you'd need a different one and so on and so on. But, you know, they supplied the plug for it um, for the uh, X30 to the... I can never get these ones right. I can never remember what they're called. The JSTs, I think. I can't remember. Um, so they supply that. And it's literally two cables. Switch it on. Works great. Nice and simples all right so i've just spent the last couple of evenings just uh putting together this little scx24 standard rails uh and this has the new purple viper from Injora brushless system in it um i'm probably going to put a cab on the back i was actually looking at the goat father cab it actually looks really good on the back of this so i think i'll end up putting the goat father rear end on this little hilux uh i've got one of our v8s in the front of it uh yeah overall not a bad little rig now i have had a little play with this at home and it is incredibly smooth very slow and the interesting thing with this is that at its slow crawl it climbs and i think that is the key i have an fcx 24m i have another scx 24 running the mb100 on a 66 turn red 
and an MB100 running a custom SCX24 on a purple Endura. And we're going to really kind of throw down and see how good this is compared to all the rest. So quite a nice budget range as well. So we're going to put a couple of batteries in them and we're going to give them, I'm going to find a nice little spot on the track somewhere and get them all doing the same thing. I'm not sure where I'm going to do this. I don't know whether I'll, I might take it over to the desert area and we'll kind of muck around over here and see how well they do. The other thing I'm doing is I'm running them all on the uh, version one handset. Two reasons why. Number one, I actually really like this handset. I think out of the, you know, the version one, two, and three, for me, this is kind of the better version. Also, it has the low, medium, and high switch on it, which I did have a muck around with the uh, brushless, and it actually worked all right on it. Now, I have done it with the brushed. The brush doesn't work so well on low. Will work fine on medium and high, but not so great on the low. But good comparison, all three rigs. They're all going to be running the same controller other than the FCX24M because that has its own controller, which we can't change. Well, we can, but I'm not going to put a, a version one in there. Right. So I'm going to keep this pretty fair. I think we're going to try them all out. Now, this is compared. This, this is quite a steep incline here, and that's really down to the rig design rather than what's it's running so it's not really a true comparison but coming up the steps on this way here of this step system that's a pretty good line and most rigs will take that so it'd be good to see how well they crawl and slow crawl is really critical at this stage because you've got to tentatively tilt it over especially if you haven't got much flex some of them are a little bit flexier than others some of them are running bigger wheels but i think they'd be a good test and basically we're doing in real time how slow they go by comparing it to their speed and distance on a tape measure. That should give us a pretty good accurate kind of how slow they can go or how fast their slow can go. It makes no sense. So here we go. So tape measures all the way along. And up first, we've got the MB100. Now I run this uh, ESC in most of my rigs now because it is such good value for money and this is actually running the purple 50 or you know the 050 from Endura and I'm also running it on the version one so we're going to set the slow crawl until it gets going still squeezing the trigger still squeezing and we're away oh and it's stalled so let's go put a little bit more power to it. And there we go. So not incredibly smooth, took quite a lot to get it going. All right, we're gonna start right down here. Let's sort out the trim again. Yeah, the wheels are a little bit skew with. All right, up to 60 centimeters. Well, now straight away, I don't have to squeeze this nowhere near as much as I did in the last rig. And already, this is a lot smoother and a much slower crawl. There we go. That's a lot smoother. So... That's the uh, red Endura in there. The last one was the purple Endura, and this has definitely got a substantial better crawl. All right, let's, uh, let's bring a newcomer in. All right, so this is my custom FCX24M, and obviously this will be running on the FMS controller, and yeah. This is uh, this is a, a 050 motor because that's what they come with from stock, and we're going to give it a quick test. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. Number one, it's in second gear, so let's take that down. Number two, this trigger is so sensitive compared to the SCX24, like crazy sensitive. So let's see if I can get this controlled. 
Not sure I can do this. Let me put the camera down. <laughs> All right, so I've swapped over hands now, and I'm actually going to try and do this, back this up a little bit. Right. So 60 centimeters is roughly about here. She's just off camera, so I'm going to bring it back a smidge just so we can get it in camera. 24 we're looking at. That's around about the 60 centimeter mark. All right, let's see how slow we can get this to go. Oh, it's so sensitive. Right, so it stalls about too slow there, but that's that's comfortable. All right, there we go. So not quite sensitive, so very difficult to to get that to do quite slow. Like you, like as soon as you put your finger down, it kind of picks up. You kind of back it off till you find the sweet spot. Now, what we can do is for this test is I could bind the, uh, just literally throttle trim up until it moves. Maybe we'll give that a go. So, one, two, and we're away. So that kind of winds up and then slows down and winds up and slows down. So that's probably just a little bit too, but there we go. Right, that's the FCX24. Let's bring in the Viper. All right, so we're now back with the Viper and we're still running the same control I've been using for the other three. Now, here's a bit of a tip. With the 050 Purple Enduro Motor and the MB100, you can use the medium and high. The medium, you will see it's a little jerky, doesn't like it. You can run it on high and it will still crawl quite slowly. The Viper will actually run low, medium and high with no issues whatsoever. Although we're going to test to see if the low selection will actually enable it to crawl. With the red Enduro motor, you can actually run the medium and high with no problems whatsoever and get quite a smooth transfer. Um, they both don't like low, not at all. Right, let's get this one tested up and see how slow this goes. Now I'm gonna keep it on medium and then maybe we'll swatch it to low and see how it goes. Let's see when that moment is just starting to kick in now. You can just see it spinning. It's quite jittery. I'm gonna wind it up a little bit more. Yep, that is moving. I mean, that is crazy slow. No, ladies and gentlemen, the camera is not in slow motion. This is as slow as it can go. I'm not gonna drive it all the way to 60 centimeters. I'll be here for hours. It is clear that the purple Viper and this brushless system from Endura is absolutely brilliant. The slow crawl on this is insane. And it's so cheap. Like it's such a budget brushless. This, my ladies, ladies and gentlemen, this, this could be the new best thing. But can they climb at the slowest crawl they can do? We're going to need to put an obstacle. All right, we're going to try this big rock here and see. Well, I see how well they climb. I'm not. I need to probably test it first. But we're going to, just going to go for it. Like we're doing tests. I'm not going to test it. Right. So. Viper's still plugged in, so I'm going to start at the end and in. I think I'll tell you what I might do as well. I'm actually going to switch this down to the low first. Let's get this down on the low and get it moving. Let's put it up to the big. So that's full. That's full bore, 
full trigger on the low setting of the SCX24 version 1 controller. Motor's moving and it's away. So the question is, has it got enough? Right, let's get it up. <laughs> Here we go. Well, the answer to that question is yes, it does have enough climbing ability at that slow speed. And that is on the lowest setting of the controller. So we've got hardly any speed going through it at all. Yeah, I mean, this thing is just absolutely crazy good. Well, let's pull it down off the rock. And a bit of a slide. And we're away. Right, let me get this right. I think I paid £47 or maybe £45 direct from Injura. Don't use Amazon. Go direct and um you know make an order at injora get a load of bits and get it come through the door 45 pound free postage and packaging holy moly batman it's ridiculous like absolutely ridiculously good my brain is just I don't even, I, I can't even be bothered to test the other three, but I guess it's in the favour of science. Let's give them a test anyway and see how they get on. All right, up next, the FCX24M. Oh, you come off the Viper. It's not slow. And I think we're going to get jammed up about there. Yeah, so one of the mods you can do with these FCX24Ms is you can actually adjust the shock towers. And I've got these still set on the highest level, so it's quite low. Uh, I do need to put it back to the middle. Uh, and actually, they have a lower one as well to give you a better sense of uh, clearance. You can see as it's quite flat. Um, let's just see if I can... So it's not necessarily a problem with cr climbing... Let's see if I can just do it on the uh, trim. So one two, three, four. Well, it's gone up, but it's nowhere near as slow as the Viper. Okay, up next is the Injora Red and I say on the slow setting still squeezing the trigger like it's almost down so you can get quite a nice crawl I mean it's pretty good but I don't think it'll climb at that no a little bit more pressure 
little bit more, a little bit more. Oh, you really have to give it full beans on the low setting. And it's kind of really stop start. Yeah, it binds up quite a lot. So it's not great on the low setting, as I was saying. We're going to flock it over to medium and see how well it travels. So straight away, I barely got to squeeze the trigger and we've got movement, which is much better compared to the low. Still quite, you know, for a brush setup, that's really nice. Okay, so it's binded then. Still, but still having to squeeze the trigger. Still squeezing, still not fluid. There we go, right, there we go. So, yeah. Having to give it quite a lot of, so it kind of stalls in a few places and then you kind of give it a little bit more, but it, you know, it's not for a brush setup. I mean, it's not really poor. Um, so, you know, I've been using this for a while now and I actually don't really have much problems with it. You know, um, right now I know wheel size is going to make a big difference, and really to get a real, true, accurate, uh, scientific result, we'd have to build one car and keep swapping everything out so it was running the same tires, the wheels, and absolutely everything. But I wasn't going to do that, <laughs> so this thing's got big old wheels on it. This is running the 50. This is kind of just showing, this is running on a medium. So I'm going to put it back on the low again and I'll show you what I mean with these. So this is the low setting again. Squeezing, 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 squeeze, still squeezing and we're away. Nice and slow, very juddery, binding. Fingers literally buried now and you know, it'll go over. So you, you've got very little throttle control on the low. So we're gonna go back to medium. And again, we're gonna squeeze this trigger. Squeeze on the trigger. Oh. Again, noticeably that the, it changes uh, regarding sensitivity. Again, it's not, it's binded up. Very juddery, very bindy. But, Again, for a brush slow crawl, and, and, and look, we're talking these ESCs are under 20 pound. You know, under 20 pound, I mean, that's ridiculous. Oh, I'm gonna come off the bat. All right, so that's a tabletop test. Let's put them around some obstacles and see how they get on. Come on, keep going. That's it. All right, mate. Now towards me. Slowly, slowly, slowly up the hill. Straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up. That's it. Go, 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 go. Straight, 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 straight. Well done. There we go. Right. So it handles that type of situation really well with the MB100 big wheels and a 050. But we're going to now swap out and try little wheels. And the uh, the red Endura. Trying to take the same line. All right, here we go. So this is on the LCG chassis. We've got some small Bajas. And we're running the red Endura motor. Now there's a bit of a bind up right there. I'm gonna have to just teat this backwards and forwards just to get off that hump because otherwise it will throw you over and that's the type of lines that you get at reactive terrain <laughs> right there but there we go so relatively smooth um, with the red 
Endura, especially on the medium setting on the SCX24 controller. So, yeah, that looks pretty good. I do like that. It does run quite sw smoothly. And the chassis, you know, the, the, the ramp crab chassis does work superb on this as well. Right, let's give it a go with the little FCX24M. All right, now the problem I'm going to have with this is that I literally have to launch it over this rib. I know that because I haven't made the modifications yet to flip the skid or drop the suspension down. So, yeah, this you do have to kind of throw itself off and use the second gear. But I have to say, this is why I love these little trucks, because you've got to use everything they've given you to get it down and around this course. Now this is going to be super tough for this little thing. This is a really tough line. Oh, I thought I was going to go then. Uh, I still might. Yeah, I think this is going to go. We're just going to put this thing little. Oh. We're going to plonk it back in there because I know it's really going to struggle because it's just not set up for any of this at the moment. And we're going to plonk that back into that position. This is like really kind of putting David against Goliath here. Um, burying itself down with these tiny, tiny little wheels. Really having to fight for your lines. And again... And again, you really got to throw these things around. It's a little ambitious before this poor little thing. I should have brought, probably brought the Range Rover. Uh, sorry, I should have brought the uh, Disco. Uh, it's still set and I've swapped the skid around and the suspension hasn't been lowered. Uh, I kind of had this set up because it looked kind of cool. Doesn't go around. Well, it will, but my word, you have to fight for your lines. All right, let's bring in the Viper. Okay. All right, so here we go. Vipers on. And, uh, yeah. Just look at that. All right, here we go. So straight away, the control of this ESC... We're going to see if the old bind happens around about here. So this is where we, everything gets put in a bind. That bumper is going to cause me a bit of problems, I think. Oh, no, enough poke to kind of force the bumper over. And again, like I'm saying, this is, this is a hefty line. This can throw the rig over. And then it's literally like a, a four foot drop to the floor, which anything can happen when you're falling at that type of distance. All the way down there. <laughs> all right, try and get this over. I'm doing this one handed as well. This is not always easy. I'm gonna back her up a bit and try and get it into the groove. Over there, a little bit of wheel rub on that front arch. I don't know if this is going to go. If that can just drop off before it rolls. Ladies and gentlemen, look at that angle. There it goes. <laughs> I won't lie, I did hold my breath slightly. <laughs> but you wouldn't be able to kind of, to get that type of extreme with a brush is um, is barely, it is almost impossible. That control that I had on the throttle made that 
possible right there. And it pulls up pretty quick as well, so the snap on the brakes is nice. Ooh, getting a bit tangled up in the older trees. Um, that's just crazy good, guys, honestly. Ooh, oh, I thought it was going to go back down with the grit and the sand. Now, I have to say, I haven't had a lot of experience with brushless systems, although we've definitely had a few Furitex down here. And I'm going to be honest with you. This thing is perfect. Like, it is so good. And it's, it's really smooth. I'm definitely going to be getting a few more of these with, for these guys. I mean... I noticed they've just brought out the fat Viper as well, so it'd be interesting to see what that out motor's like. You know, you've got a bit of kick. I mean, if I put it on high, you know, that's pretty good. But it works really well on that medium. Well, let's see if we can put it up sink really nice and steep. I actually think the tires are actually letting us down now. So I'm actually running these uh, Mickey Thompson Baja Min, uh, MTZs. When I pulled them out of the packet, I noticed they were quite hard or quite a rigid compound. Definitely noticing some uh, lack of traction with these uh, on this course. Not so much traction on over there. I don't know what they're going to be like on the other stuff. But we're going to throw it around and let's see what it's like. Like on the con on the cement, it works really well. These tires work great. Let's take up run the let's get it up here. I use that slow crawl to Yeah. Still getting the same issues as we get with the brush list, just getting stuck in these wheel ruts. This loose grit. Oh, oh. Alright. Loose grit causing it problems, but we're alright. Man, it's warm tonight. All right, so overall, this purple Viper, uh, even with these kind of tires, I'm not, I mean, they are so hard. I mean, the FCX 24M comes with softer tires than these compounds. Maybe I need to wear them in and kind of soften up that edge a little bit. I'll keep running them for a while and see what they come up like. But yeah, when you compare to the Super Swampers, nice and soft and then i got the uh, mts 
right at the other end, you know, they're soft. These, these are a real hard compound. Um, you, you just can't get that type of performance from that little money anywhere else. Um, you just, you know, the unit is a little bit on the bulky side because you've got the separate on and off switch to house as well. I mean, I put mine up front in the engine bay just for simplicities. Um, but overall, I mean, it, the actual motor itself and the housing is really nice and compact. You can actually get it in the GOAT series as well, which is a really big thing because the Ninja GOAT that we produce is super tight on space. And, you know, you've got to try and get a battery in the cab. You've got to try and get all that. It's definitely tight. But with a back end on it, you can definitely get it in. So trying to squeeze it into the, some of the slightly smaller ones. I mean, there are definitely plenty of space in the cab. I have had to put the battery on the back of this, but I am putting back end on it anyway. The smoothness of the motor is, you know, really good. Now I did have a bit of problems right at the beginning when I first opened it out and I kind of spun the housing around. It was a little grindy. It had like a little bite point and then it kind of moved forwards and be okay. Actually, once I kind of got it in and run it up a little bit, it settled right down and it doesn't do it anymore. So maybe there was just something in there that needed a little bit of a, or maybe a little bit wearing in first. But other than that, I've had no issues with installing, electronics, nothing at all. So for performance over pounds or performance over dollars, wherever you go, wherever you are in, in the world, this is up there with some of the best ESC brushless systems we have on the market for the 124 or 118th scale. So there you go. Conclusion is, well, the purple Viper is amazing. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you comment below, smash that like button, hit the notification bell. And if you're new to the channel, then welcome and make sure you hit the subscribe button because yeah, you know, we're a cool channel and we need your support. So I'm going to go and just put purple vipers in everything i think no in all fairness the mb100 is still one of the best budget brushed escs out there by far but this purple viper is is a whole new level really enjoyed it it's very smooth it's very capable and it allows you to do some crazy stuff because it's very smooth and controllable the little FCX24M was a little bit out of its league. Um, but, you know, I'm still holding out with these guys. I think they're going to be cracking little vehicles. And if you don't already have one, they are definitely something you're going to want to put on your shelf or have in your arsenal of mini crawlers. And really, that's about all I've got left to say. I'm going to carry on driving around a bit. i got my daughter down here. We're going to smash some lines and have some fun. I'll see, I'll see you, you next time. time.